I'm from Scotland. I uh, came to South Africa in 1963 with my parents. We immigrated here, uh, not knowing the Lord, or uh, really not knowing anybody at that time. And then uh, I got born again in 19, uh, December 1976 and uh, had been involved in music before that and got involved in Christian music. And uh, from there was a uh, praise and worship leader at the Arema Church for many years. And then uh, left the church in a full-time capacity to fulfill the calling that God gave me to teach worship as a lifestyle. And since then I've been singing and, uh, and teaching all over the world. You know, it struck me in 1983, God spoke to me very clearly about the body of Christ had never really moved in a dimension of worship as a lifestyle. At that time, I was leading worship at the church at Rema here in Johannesburg. And uh, I felt we were doing pretty well as, as, uh, as worshipers, you know. But God, uh, God showed me that what he was after was a lifestyle of worship, that worship is not something we do as an act, necessarily. It is, of course, but, but really what worship is is something that we're conscious of all the time. It's something that we do all the time. And, uh, and that should be developed in uh, the individual believer's life. So I started to put together notes from the Bible um, and presented a course on uh, lifestyle principles. And, uh, and since that time, it has just it's gone, all over, gone all over the world, really. I believe that what integrity is offering uh, is prophetic. The, the, there's two things, I think, is happening through, through these albums, especially the ones I've done lately. There's a tremendous level of excellence amongst the musicians, which is scriptural. We see that in the Word. But also the, the thing that struck me was um, the humility that was found among the, the men. In fact, it was said that uh, by the integrity people that if they had to have chosen uh, a group of men and women to come and pray in South Africa, they would have chosen the same group of men and women. But here we find them great musicians and very humble. And so I think they've, they've moved the benchmark in terms of where the church is going in regards to praise and worship. We're going to have excellence in music ministry. And it's going to come from men and women who are humble before God and who really have a love for God. The concert at Rema where we did the album was uh, fantastic in, in the sense that um, it was so genuine, it was so real. Um, the people were swept into worship from the very beginning, praise and worship. Uh, it seemed to just touch the people. It seemed to be a real catalyst that drew them into the presence of the Lord. And from there, I, what I experienced more than anything was I felt that the Holy Spirit had taken over. And there really wasn't very much that I was doing at all, that the Spirit was so powerfully touching the people, convicting them to, to be drawn into the heart of the Lord. And, uh, and that's what I experienced that evening. Well, for unbelievers uh, that watch the video, and I believe that they'll be touched by the reality of worship, the genuineness of worship. Because that evening, as we worshiped the Lord, it was very real. Um, it wasn't fabricated in any way. It was, it was something genuine. And I think that's what we've got to do as, as men and women of God. If we preach the gospel and it's a reality to us as we do it or as we lead worship and it's a reality, I think that's all we've got to concentrate on and let the Holy Spirit do the rest. You know, when people ask me, Abraham, when you went to South Africa, is there anything about that trip that really meant a lot to you? And I want to really ask the viewers to to bear with me, I have a very, very emotional nature. And I have to tell you that the, the experiences of this trip truly are life transforming. Um, there are many different kinds of South Africans. There is a South Africa that we have been hearing about in the news for so long. And uh, there's a certain prejudice that we all have developed against going to South Africa because of what we hear about the news. Then when I thought of the fact that I, I am born again, that I've given my life to Jesus, and the Lord says that I, when you are born again, you can see the kingdom of God. This trip to South Africa allowed me to see that the kingdom of God is alive and well in South Africa, which the news does not, does not report. And um, there was a, a black boy who, who came to the edge of the stage and he asked for my autograph. And uh, he says, sign, can you sign this? And I said, but this is your card of identity that determines whether you can go in and out of the different neighborhoods according to the laws of South Africa. And he says, I don't need that anymore. Sign here. <laughs> 
and I rejoice knowing that uh, there's a, a transformation happening in the laws of South Africa and that this child had a, a joy and a freedom because in, as, as a result of the performance he had received Jesus and I was able to sign in the card that was usually evidence that he wasn't free and uh, I said Lord this is a unique opportunity that you're giving me to see that there's a whole other world available to those that love you no matter where in the world they are why do I play with so much joy and energy um, I'll tell you a brief anecdote one time uh, I was practicing in my house and Alex Acuna came to visit unannounced and my wife says well you know he's practicing in his room you just go and enter and when Alex opened the door he says that he was watching me practicing in my room I was totally by myself and I was completely jumping all over the place out of control and Alex started to laugh he says man I thought that you did this only on performance so you actually play like this all the time <laughs> and I said to him you know uh, it is before I knew the Lord it was the only spiritual language I had so uh, the gift of music from the very beginning has been a, a tool or an a way for me to communicate with God and uh, so there is an aromatic sense that happens in me whenever I feel the music that puts me in the presence of the Lord and uh, it is a great privilege to be able to make music uh, in general but when the music is particularly set aside for the purpose of worshiping Him then uh, everything is connected according to the way it was intended. People through the years have asked me, what does Jesus mean to you? What does it mean for you to serve the Lord? And uh, one time in Germany, a reporter came to me and he said, uh, Abraham, right now uh, in the United States it's become very fashionable to be a Christian, are you talking about Jesus just because it is like the in thing to do because it is hip to talk about Jesus or to say that you're a Christian? And at the time, uh, out of obedience to the Lord and out of a heart of real servanthood, my wife put her medical practice on hold for the sake to make herself available to raise our two boys and um, I said to him, you know, for my wife to do that because of the love that she has for Jesus, it is not hip for someone to put their career on hold. It is not the fashionable thing to do. And uh, now we have two children that are blossoming in ways that uh, we could have never dreamed. Um, the challenges of living in the world remain. That does not change. But knowing that we are not of the world gives us a strength and a power and a, and a freedom and a joy and a sense of safety, a real peace that, uh, that nothing else can. And the, the Bible says, you know, my, my peace I give to you, my peace I live with you. It is a peace that the world does not know, that the world does not give. Come unto me and receive it. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart. And um, so on a daily basis, getting in the car, walking around the house, traveling, there is always the sense of wanting to just constantly be singing songs of worship to the Lord, humming melodies, sometimes even taking songs that are very famous and changing the words, that, turning them into expressions of, of praise and worship unto the Lord. So um, I believe deep in my heart, and I have been able to experience this over and over, that when a person sings unto the Lord, He creates new life in us. And that new life is exactly what we need to get through each second. There was a time in which uh, 
in the video that people have just seen, we were singing um, about how we love the Lord each in our own language. You know, we are one. Aún siendo muchos, somos en Cristo un solo cuerpo de amor. Though we are many, in Christ we are one body. And then to hear it in South African different dialects and um, that is a worship lifestyle where you can come in touch with people from different cultures and start speaking words oh, that affirm and confirm who Jesus is for us and who we are in Jesus. And then to have that become a place that the Lord himself inhabits. Oh. <laughs> What a lifestyle that is. I wish that on everyone. This is Micah, the seventh chapter, verses 17 through 19, and it says, They shall lick the dust like a serpent. They shall crawl from their holes like snakes of the earth. They shall be afraid of the Lord our God and shall fear because of you. Who is a God like you, pardoning iniquity and passing over the transgression of the remnant, remnant of his heritage? He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in mercy. He will again have compassion on us and will subdue our iniquities. You know, uh, there is a South Africa that's hurting people. But we don't need to go to South Africa to, to see people hurting. There is also a South Africa that forgives. There is a South Africa that, that is causing people to repent and to change because they themselves have experienced the presence and the love of God that changes people. And that I've seen that South Africa, I've been touched by that South Africa. And now that I'm back in the United States, or no matter where in the world I go, no matter what recording session I'm part of, I have seen and experienced what happens when people's hearts change because of knowing that their iniquities, no matter how bad they are, can be forgiven by a Lord that wants to make us whole. God bless you all. Ask him into your hearts, sing unto him, worship him. Jesus Christ is Lord, he's real, he loves you. And I can tell you that because he loved me while I was still a sinner. And I know he loves you no matter who you are. Amen. Hosanna Music is powerful praise and worship music that brings you into the presence of God. Each new recording captures and blends the quality and excellence of a studio recording with the atmosphere and anointing of live worship. For each tape and CD, we also offer accompaniment tracks with instruments on the left channel and vocals on the right. Featuring all the songs from Hosanna Music Recordings, our praise and worship songbooks are available in spiral-bound or words-only formats. They're perfect for home groups, Bible studies, or churches. We also provide octavos, orchestrations, and demo tracks for church and congregational use. Hosanna Music, America's best-selling praise and worship music with over 10 million recordings sold.